Hello again. Thanks for tuning in to yet another edition of Purple Power Play. I'm Paul Harris. And I'm Melissa Von Lintel. It was a busy weekend in Manhattan as K-State hosted its ultimate Wildcat weekend, but unfortunately, it wasn't the happiest weekend. I hate to say it, but you are right, Melissa. Let's start things off at Snyder Family Stadium, where it was senior day, and there's a lot riding on K-State's game against Missouri. The Wildcats took to the field last Saturday looking to cement their first division title since 2003. That, of course, being the year they eventually won the conference crown over favorite Oklahoma. Fans in attendance for senior day had high hopes for this surprising squad, but on this afternoon, it was just too much Tigers. Blaine Gabbard had himself a field day against the usually stingy Wildcat defense, going 20 for 27 with 298 yards, including three touchdowns, all number 81, Denario Alexander. It was a difficult day to gain any momentum as turnovers nipped Bill Snyder's boys in both halves. And for nearly the first time all season, K-State was unable to find a ground game as Missouri bottled up superstar Daniel Thomas for just 79 yards in the game. By the end of the day, Missouri had tallied 433 yards in offense for an average of 8.5 yards per down. Not the day Bill Snyder wanted, nor his starting safety, Emmanuel Moore. Like I said, um, we, we, we didn't play too bad. It's just the fact that we didn't execute like what we were supposed to do. But like I said, they got a victory. We got the loss. We just got to learn from that and get ready for um, wrestling. The Wildcats still have a chance at bowl eligibility in a Big 12 North title this weekend. But we'll get into that a little bit later. As we mentioned earlier, it was the final home game for 24 K-State seniors. One of the seniors is Grant, quarterback Grant Gregory. Our very own Jeff Burkhart sat down with Gregory to discuss his journey to the Little Apple. Just six months ago, it looked as though quarterback Grant Gregory was heading to Eastern Kentucky to use his sixth and final year of eligibility. But a call from K-State head coach Bill Snyder brought the South Florida graduate to Manhattan. The road to Kansas State has been anything but smooth for Gregory. Long, winding, full of a lot of downs and a couple ups, and I couldn't couldn't be happier with the way everything turned out. Uh, the chance to be, I mean, if, if we can win this game, that'll I mean, be, be the biggest, biggest accomplishment in my life. During non-conference play, Gregory spent most of his time watching the games from the sidelines. But after the Cats started just two and two under Carson Kaufman, Coach Snyder looked to Gregory to lead the Cats through the Big 12 slate. It goes without saying, but Gregory has embraced the role as starting quarterback. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome scenario, and I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade this for the world. Though he doesn't have the gaudy numbers to match other quarterbacks in the Big 12, Gregory's teammates know he possesses all the intangibles of a winner. He does a great job out there, he, uh, taking hits, getting back up, uh, running the ball and uh, you know, just really being a leader for our offense. Gregory's toughness has been on full display throughout the conference season. K-State is just one victory away from claiming its fifth Big 12 North Division title, something Gregory desperately wants to bring to Manhattan. To, to have an opportunity this late in the year, I mean, we can be, I mean, K-State's won four Big 12 North titles. We have a chance to make it five. This class, this senior class, and this team has a chance to be one of those. Regardless of what happens this Saturday in Lincoln, Nebraska, Gregory has been thankful for the opportunity to learn and play for one of the greatest coaches in the history of college football, Bill Snyder. I, I love the fact that he always talks about just keep playing, keep playing, because you never know what's going to happen. You could be down by 30 and come back in a game. You could be up by 30 and another team comes back. And he just stresses keep playing, do what you've been coached to do, and execute, and hopefully you come out on the top end. Reporting for Purple Power Play, I'm Jeff Burkhart. Once again, that was Grant Gregory, who has played his last home game in a Wildcat uniform. Gregory's senior class wasn't the only one playing on its home turf for the last time. The Manhattan High Indians continued playoff action last Friday when they welcomed Wichita Heights Falcons to Bishop Stadium for a quarterfinal matchup. Here to tell us more about it is Blake Thorson. Blake? How are we doing? Doing pretty well. So, Blake, I heard you checked out the Manhattan High football game last Friday. Yes, I did. I even put together a little highlights package for you guys. Well, let's take a look at those. It was an electric atmosphere inside Bishop Stadium last Friday night as the 10-0 Manhattan Indians played their state quarterfinal game against the 6-4 Wichita Heights Falcons. Things started off on the right foot for the Indians as their stout defense led to an early field goal and this Falcon fumble put them in prime position to add to their lead. After this nice run around left end by running back Derek Campbell put the Indians inside the red zone, much to the delight of those sporting the blue and red on this Friday evening, Running back Ty Suds punches it in from five yards out to give the Indians a 10-0 lead. After this, there was not much to cheer about for Indian fans. 
Heights would seize momentum late in the first with Manhattan looking to take a commanding 17-0 lead into half. The Heights defense buckled down, stopping the Indians on four straight plays from the three-yard line, culminating with this incomplete pass to Tate Snyder. After the intermission, and a nice little present presentation by the Manhattan High marching band, it was all Falcons, starting with this 44-yard touchdown strike from quarterback Matt Reed to Steven Strand, which cut the Indian lead to 10-7. Coach Sharks had a few tricks up his sleeve, including this nice throwback screen to Campbell, who was one of the lone bright spots for the Indians on the night, racking up more than 100 all-purpose yards. Let's take a look at this beautifully designed play. QB Wilkinson throws it back to Campbell, who picks up some crushing blocks downfield to put the ins Indians inside the 30-yard line. But the Indians' offense would stall again. Despite Sharks' best efforts to fire squad up, it would be not be enough as Reed would hook up with Strand once more, this time from 29 yards out, to put the Falcons up 14-10 midway through the fourth quarter. It was a lead they would never relinquish as the Indians could not pull off another miracle finish as this fourth down incompletion sealed the deal for the Falcons. The Falcons, now 7-4, will return home to face Derby in the state semifinals. The Indians finish the season with a 10-1 mark.